Okay, we're now going to look at maximum minimum problems using uh, differentiation and how we can find uh, solve maximum minimum problem problems. Uh, we know about maximum minimums when you've got uh, a function y is equal to some function of x. You would find your dy by dx and then your dt y by dx squared. So dy by dx and put it equal to zero to find the maximum minimum and test it using dy uh, dt y by dx squared. Now, if the question was slightly different, so if it was like this form where you've got a formula p is equal to 3x squared, 3x squared plus 2x, you would be looking for dp. So what dy by dx means, differentiate y with respect to x. So here it's p, so you've got to differentiate p with respect to x. So you'd be looking for dp by dx. Okay, and then you would put dp by dx equal to zero to find where there's any maximum or minimums. Okay, we're gonna go on and just look through an example of this and see just how we work through it. And you can read through these notes in your own time. Okay, this example says, the sum of two numbers, x and y, is 18. Find the minimum value of the sum of their squares, s. Prove that there is a minimum value using differentiation. Okay, right. We've got to find some way to connect these two things. We say that the sum of two numbers, x and y, is 18. So that tells me that x, the sum means the, the two things added, x plus y is equal to 18 and I'm going to call that equation 1 and it says find the minimum value of the sum of their squares s so s is equal to x squared the first number squared plus y number the y squared and then added and that is equation 2. Now the problem we have is that we can only different we could different we can't differentiate s with respect to anything because it's got two variables, it's got two things, x and y. So what we want, what we have to do is get this second, uh, the second formula into just, so, so that it is just, has just one variable in it. So we're gonna do that by rearranging this first equation. So we're just gonna say rearrange equation one to give y is equal to 18 minus x. And I generally people are more comfortable doing it this way as we're used to differentiating with respect to x. It doesn't really matter, but just people do prefer it this way. What we do then is we substitute into equation two. So what we mean by this is everywhere you see y, you will now be writing 18 minus x. So our equation two will now become big S is equal to x squared, it was fine, plus my y is now 18 minus x all squared. Okay, that's still a mess. So we've got a good bit of tidying up to do. So that's x squared plus and my 18 minus x squared. I'm going to write down that as 18 minus x upon 18 minus x. We then go on and we multiply that out. Okay, so 18 times 18 is 324. Then you've got 18 times minus x is minus 18x. Minus x times 18 is another minus 18x. Minus x times minus x is plus x squared. Tidy up and see what we get. You have big S is equal to 2x squared minus 36x plus 324. Okay, what we're going to do now, how much space have we got? Nope. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, go on and differentiate this thing. So we've got our function of x, very importantly, we've got our function of s, sorry, function of s. And it's all in terms of one variable. So it's all in terms of s. So we're now good to go to differentiate. Now, what we are not doing is dy by dx. The y doesn't exist here anymore. So it's ds by dx. And this means, remember, differentiate, differentiate s with respect to x. So it's very important that we understand what that is. Okay, differentiate 2x squared, you're going to get 4x. Differentiate minus 36x, you're going to get at minus 36. What you then want to do is put ds by dx equal to zero. So that means zero is equal to 4x minus 36, which means 36 is equal to 4x. So 36 divided by four is equal to your x. So x is equal to nine. Okay, uh, we will go back up top and see what we've got. So we've got our x equals nine. We're back up to here. We need to then find the corresponding y value. Uh, so when x is equal to 9, 
y is equal to uh, f10 minus 9. So y is equal to 9. And the next thing we've got to do is prove it was a minimum. So we have to differentiate our, our s dy by ds by dx, sorry, to give you d2s by dx squared. And that is our ds by dx. Where was it? It was down here. It was 4x minus 36. So if you differentiate that, you just get 4, which is greater than 0. Therefore, it is minimum value. Okay, read the question again. The question said, prove that that is a minimum value using differentiation and find the minimum value of the sum of their squares. So I didn't actually need to find my value of y. That was, that was unnecessary for me to do that up here. It doesn't really matter. It hasn't taken any time. But I could have used the, this formula uh, to find my minimum value of my s because this is all in terms of s, all in terms of x. Now I've got my x and my y, I will just use this formula too uh, to do it. So minimum value, just say uh, when, when x equals 9 and y equals 9, s is going to be equal to 9 squared plus 9 squared, which is just going to be 81 plus 81, which is just going to be equal to 162. And that's it. Okay, this last example for us says, the owner of a stately home wishes to build a rectangular ornamental pond on his in his grounds. Let the lengths be x and y meters. And they've shown you on the diagram why they've, they've done it. Uh, he wishes to surround the pond with a tarmac path, one meter wide on the three sides and three meter wide at one end to allow for seating. The surface area of the pond is to be 100 meters squared. It says in the question, prove that the total surface area of the tarmac is given by A, which is equal to 4x plus 200 over x plus 8. Okay, so we've got to do that. Okay, I've written down a couple of key things. It tells you in the question the area of the pond is 100 meters squared. So the dimensions of the pond were x, y, x and y. So x, y is equal to 100. The area of the tarmac, remember back in the question, this bit was tarmac, the shaded bit was a pond. So the area of the tarmac is a big rectangle minus the area of the pond. So it's a big rectangle minus the area of the pond. Okay, let's look at the dimensions of this big rectangle. So we'll look at uh, the vertical height of it here, first of all. Uh, it's x plus another 1 plus another 1. So it really is x plus, uh, x plus 2. And we'll look at the horizontal. It's got y plus 1 plus 3. So that's really y plus 4. So y plus 4. Okay, and we will go with that and tidy that up. It's a bit of a mess at the minute, so let's multiply it all out and tidy up. x times y is xy. x times 4 is 4x. 2 times y is 2y. 2 times 4 is 8, and then minus 100. And if you do that, uh, you will get uh, you'll get xy plus 4x plus 2y minus 92. Okay, so that's our equation uh, two. We haven't quite got where we want to be with this, unfortunately. We wanted this to be equal to 4x plus 200 over x plus eight. So we're quite a bit off this, actually. Uh, we need to figure out how, we got, how we're gonna get there. So what we could do, notice their equa equation that they want us to get have has no y's in it. So what we want to do is change our equation one uh, to find out what y, to make y the subject, and then we're gonna substitute that back into equation two. Okay, so uh, equation one was xy is equal to 100. That was your equation one. So therefore, your y is equal to 100 over x. And what we're going to do is uh, sub substitute into equation two. So your equation two now becomes area is equal to uh, x times 100 over x. That was my y, remember, plus 4x plus 2 times my y, which is 100 over x, and then minus 92. This is looking a little bit more hopeful. And if we just do that out and see what we get, you get area is equal to x times 100 over x will just be 100. And then you've just got a 4x. And then 2 times 100 over x is going to be 200 over x. And then that's minus 92. And then tidy that up, you've got uh, a is equal to 
and I'm going to write it the way they wanted it, which was the 4x came first, then you had 200 over x, and then you had plus 8. So you know you've got your marks for that first part. Okay, we're now on to part B, just a good exam technique. It is quite common in an exam, if we look back at this question, that people will not be able to get this answer right. They cannot work this bit out. If that happens in an exam, uh, you can still get your full marks for the part B because they've given you what they what you need to, your starting point is for part B. So when we're doing our part B, we're going to be looking at this and we're going to try and find the minimum value of this. So even if you couldn't get part A, you can get the full marks for part B. Okay, I'm just going to label my work a wee bit better. I forgot to label that. That was part A over here. We're now on to part B. Part B says find the value of x, which will minimize the area of the tarmac, proving that it is a minimum. So your area uh, of the tarmac is equal to 4x plus 200 over x plus 8. It's going to be difficult for me to differentiate this because this middle term here is not an index form. So the very first thing I'm going to do is get it in index form. 4x was fine. The plus 8 was fine. But this term in the middle is 200 times x to the minus 1. I have to squeeze that in a wee bit there. Uh, differentiate with respect to x. And you're going to get 4. And then uh, to differentiate this bit, multiply by the power. Uh, so that becomes 200, minus 200. And then reduce your power by 1. So it's minus 200 x to the minus 2. Okay, define, oh, define minimum values. We're going to have to then uh, put the fine minimum values to find minimum values. We're going to have to put that equal to uh, zero. So I'll just get rid of that. That'll be easier. I'm trying to fix that. Uh, so we're going to put our D to DA by DX equal to zero. So put DA by DX equal to zero. So that's four minus 200 X to the minus two is equal to zero. And then we're going to work with that. Now, I don't like working with these indices in this form, so I would convert it back uh, to the way, uh, this sort of way, and see what we have. So when you've got the x on the denominator, I should say. So 4 minus 200 over x squared is equal to 0, which means 4 is equal to 200 over x squared. So 4x squared is equal to 200, which means x squared is equal to 200 divided by 200 divided by 4, which is equal to 50. And then we can get our two x values is going to be in this case. So that means x is equal to this plus or minus the square root of 50. And we will go with that and see uh, what we get. And really, if you hit plus or minus the square root of 50 in your calculator, that would give you 5 root 2. So plus or minus 5 root 2. Uh, right. Think about what we've got in this question. So in this question, x is a length. So you're not going to have a minus length. So it's important here. We know that we can just ignore that. So we'll just say ignore a negative. As x is a length. So therefore, your x is just equal to 5 root 2. Now your d2y by d2y is not d2y at all. It's d2a by x squared is important for us to find. So you're differentiating your, uh, differentiating your da by dx to see what you get. And you get 400x to minus 3. And then we can just say when x is equal to 5 root 2, d2a by dx squared is greater than zero. Therefore, minimum. Okay, let's have a look and see how we answered the question. Quite often this is enough for sometimes to ask us to find the area. Let's have a look and see. Find the value of x which will minimize the area of the tarmac, proving that it is a minimum. So in actual fact, we don't have to go on to find the area. That's fine. Just always go back and read the question to make sure and that's it okay folks that's us done on our differentiation notes and we are now ready to exercise it